So whenever I go look up music or artists, I always go to the site Genius because not only do they have credited ghostwriters on there for their songs, they also put like the most popular song first by an artist when you search for them. So this made finding everything very easy. I searched up the first person. I, I did them all in order. It was a matter of time before. The devil works hard, Chris Jenner works harder, and then there's Angie Sanderson. It never happened. He said there is an uncomfortable amount of auto-tune on this song. I was a bad girl. I did some bad things. Jojo Siwa's team did her dirty. Jojo Siwa has just released a new song, and whether you like what she released or not, oh got stuck she's been accused of stealing the vocals more precisely in her new music i did some bad things i swear i did it all for fun and it meant nothing it never happened but also code deb has uncovered literally all the tea on jojo's new song and i'm holding something in that literally has nothing to do with me it literally keeps me awake at night and it has literally nothing to do with me also after we talk about jojo siwa i have another story that i wanted to cover today about a famous TikToker that is allegedly abusing her dad by making him live in a van. And as some of you guys know, I live in my van traveling Canada right now. So that story hits home and we're going to get into that after this Jojo Siwa story. So let's get into it. Ren Glycolic Acid. In my own opinion, the new Jojo Siwa song is literally giving descendants. So I've been seeing this comment a ton under like Jojo Siwa's song released post. That's exactly what I heard as well. And uh, I've actually figured out why it sounds like descendants. And as somebody that was in Descendants 2, heard that stuff live, filmed the movie, worked with the cast, I would say that I can totally hear that as well. We filmed all of the songs in Descendants 2 with playback, so I heard them before anybody else did in terms of the public. But I would say that there's definitely some merit there, but somebody has a theory because Code Deb found out all of the information behind JoJo's new release. I did some research on my way home from work, so stick with me, bear with me. Hyaluronic acid serum. That being said, there is an uncomfortable amount of auto-tune on this song. Before I blew it. And granted, I think that is what people are comparing to Descendants. So this TikToker, Code Deb, basically found a leaked version of Jojo Siwa's song on YouTube where it listed every single person who helped make the song. But I'm like, not everybody in Descendants was wildly, wildly auto-tuned. Some people were way, way more auto-tuned than others. Like Sophia, Sophia Carson, she was way more auto-tuned than the rest of the cast in that movie. But it turns out Jojo Siwa actually had the same people that produced Bed On It from High School Musical and Descendants and Hannah Montana. That's who created this song for her. But the bigger question is whose vocals are those? Because we can clearly hear that is not Jojo Siwa singing unless they did it by AI, which I heard some people in the comments predict that it could be AI as well. It could be. We hear a little hint of Jojo's voice, but according to this comment, that's not how Jojo sings. So whenever I go look up music or artists, I always go to the site Genius because not only do they have credited ghostwriters on there for their songs, they also put like the most popular song first by an artist when you search for them. So this made finding everything very easy. I searched up the first person. I, I did them all in order. So the first person when I looked her up, I saw that she made songs for Selena Gomez, specifically Selena Gomez and The Scene. Um, she made her own music, but she also was part of this like Disney's dance remix. So I clicked on the Selena Gomez album to see what I was looking at, to see what was going on. And I saw Tim James, who is the next guy on the list, who's also doing background vocals for the song, as well as some other things. This is important. This is where it gets juicy. So Tim James is credited as making songs for Shake It Up, the same Disney remix, and a few others. When I clicked on his, like, more popular songs, he made songs for High School Musical, um... And the Descendants 1 and 2 and 3 soundtrack. He made these songs. He wrote them. He produced them. He made them. He also made songs for Hannah Montana and Let It Shine. He also, also made songs for the Jonas Brothers and Demi Lovato. It gets crazier, guys. Then I went in the order, looked up the next guy, Desmond Child. Next, I'm just using this Neutrogena Hydro Boost. He helped make the song Live in La Vida Loca. And he also worked with Alice Cooper, Joan Jett, and the Blackhearts. And he also made 
big time rush famous for Nickelodeon. Keep that in mind. Keep the Nickelodeon stuff in mind, okay? All right, Steve Hammonds. Again, Selena Gomez, old Selena Gomez, and Tokyo Hotel. And then when I looked more, he also produced for Descendants. I'm gonna save some time on the rest of these people. Like, these two people have also produced stuff for Disney and um, My Little Pony, apparently. Elohim is just some artist. Anyway, we have to talk about Rock Mafia. This, this is important. This is the T. This is, I knew this producer's name. I knew this producer's name. I also know DJ Shadow, White Shadow. Like, but Rock Mafia, you have to see this. Not only did he produce for Migos and Selena Gomez specifically and the scene, Selena Gomez and the scene, Rock Mafia also specifically made Can't Be Tamed. Can't Be Tamed, the breakout song. Also Selena Gomez and the scene and also other Selena Gomez songs. That's her breakout from Disney songs. Specifically breakout from Disney songs. Also produced for Eminem, good for him. And like my friend Jonah said in the comments, Miley's Bangers era. Okay, so I wanted to pause here for a second. By the way, this is just my sunscreen. So I think there was an important part here when she says that this was the same person that created Can't Be Tamed. Because we're seeing all of these Jojo Siwa, Miley Cyrus copying accusations. And it's of no surprise. If you've been watching Jojo Siwa since day one, she's been obsessed with Miley Cyrus. She wants to be Hannah Montana. She wanted to be Miley Cyrus. She's been saying this since Abby's Ultimate Dance challenge at like six years old so this is why i think this is important everybody is saying that she's copying miley cyrus and having her bangers moment and her like miley cyrus wrecking ball jojo and her team are not that stupid there is an entire team behind this girl not just jesselyn anymore and i think that this is jojo siwa's can't be tamed era like people were saying i have no idea who the target demographic is for this song and in the comments people are like this is not like a kid's song but it's also not for adults i don't know who's supposed to listen to this and that was exactly what can't be tamed was it was like a soft launch to show people that were still like one foot in the water seeing miley cyrus as a child star that she was going to have this breakout moment that was going to like ease people in not to completely self-destruct her career overnight by just entirely diving out of the kids stuff and into the adult stuff he produced Miley's Bangers era. That's why it sounds like it. And you know why I know DJ White Shadow? Because he works with Gaga. Works a lot with Gaga, but that's not all. Y'all remember Austin Mahone, like runner up from American Idol, but was on Disney shows? Made songs for him. Made songs for My Little Pony too, I guess. Like a few My Little Pony songs. I didn't find anything for this producer like at all, but this producer, Dub Killer, Made songs for Ross Lynch on Austin and Alley. Also, uh, made songs for, uh, Shake It Up. Made breakout Britney songs. All in all, the reason you're hearing all these different sounds in JoJo Siwa's music is because she hired all these people to make herself sound like these artists that broke out before her. Like, good for her, I guess. But in my opinion, with all of these names and how much of them worked for kids shows, it really doesn't seem like she's trying to break out and be her own person. It just feels like she wants to copy. And this, in my opinion, like shows me that she really is copying Miley Cyrus. She got the same producer. This whole thing made me crazy, but it's because I work in such an industry that I have to know all this stuff. Is That's the reason I care. That's the reason I'm so interested in this. I just need to know a lot about producing, especially if I'm in film and media and different ways and that's that's why i care that's why i'm kind of crazy about this also it's entertaining so don't come for me and be like why are you even interested because i'm entertained this is so entertaining but if we know jojo siwa everything is going to be carefully orchestrated by a business team and a marketing team and she's going to carefully curate copying miley cyrus and there's a bunch of people's incomes that rely on jojo siwa and that is why i feel like this is so carefully orchestrated but i do feel like this is her can't be tamed era this is like a soft launch this is not her bangers era this is not her wrecking ball moment but let's hop into this next tiktok because they had nothing kind to say about how jojo's career was launched and i personally don't agree with everything in this tiktok but i can understand where they're coming from jojo siwa's team did her dirty she had all of the potential to go from a child star to an adult celebrity without having to go through this bangers era reputation era 
thing that she's in right now. Let me tell you what I would have done if I was on JoJo's team. So Jojo really rose to fame, dance moms, we all know it, we all loved her, Jojo with the bobo, very cute. Her and her team made a great move for her by putting her on Dancing with the Stars. And let me tell you, I thought Dancing with the Stars was her transition moment. That would have been the perfect moment. She was being authentic to herself by dancing with a female partner, the first time that's ever happened on the show. And she was coming out with these beautiful, adult, mature, red carpet looks that still felt like her with rhinestones and bright colors. If she had kept consistent with that branding after Dancing with the Stars had ended, maybe she could have written a book or done a documentary on her experience as a child star and her transition out of it instead of going through this bangers era. Because the only reason celebrities like Miley Cyrus had to go through that era is to make make that distinction. A distinction that, in my mind, Jojo had already made. She looked and felt more adult on those Dancing with the Stars red carpets. So I think Jojo's team did her dirty, because in my mind, there's no reason for her to have to do this. If putting out music is something that she wanted to do separately to share her story, that's completely different. But if this is what they're using to launch her into being an adult celebrity, this is gonna flop. I don't think she's gonna have anywhere near the kind of success that Miley Cyrus had literally ever in her life. Trust me when I say that Jojo Siwa is going to get raunchier and raunchier and raunchier as we go on, but this is definitely her can't be tamed, not her wrecking ball. All right, let's hop into our next story, which is about a TikTok influencer who is allegedly abusing her dad. So essentially, there is this famous TikToker who has tons of money living like that lavish influencer life. And she's been accused of treating her dad completely awfully when she has all of this money. Anna Paul is a TikTok creator with over 7 million followers. She's 24 years old and she's mostly known for her lifestyle content, showing off her daily life, travel, food she's eating and things she's buying. People were very attached to the content that she made with her ex-boyfriend, Glenn Thompson, as the two were together for a very long time and always posted each other. But the two split up last year, and since then, Anna has continued to post content and share her life online. But this week, another creator online tried to expose her, making it seem like she is this rich girl who is letting her dad be homeless. It's turned into this whole big mess of a situation as Anna was later harassed online with people not liking that it sounded like she wasn't supporting her dad and just letting him live out of his van, needing to DoorDash for money, meanwhile she's traveling the world buying luxury cars and clothes. And leaving him basically to live homeless and have no money or food and also exploiting him for views for her videos, but let's get into the accusation first. So essentially there's this other TikToker who you can see on screen and her name is Veruca Salt, like named after the Willy Wonka character. And she has been teasing that she has this tea on this TikToker who's abusing her dad and that she went as far as to message her about it and that she was left on red. So here's what she had to say. These were the accusations. And I'm holding something in that literally has nothing to do with me. It literally keeps me awake at night and it has literally nothing to do with me. People felt like she was hinting it to be Anna and later Veruca posted another video detailing what she had found out and how. Veruca has just recently lost her son who passed away at just one month old. She said in her TikTok that prior to his passing, she had a family friend come watch him for her. And she said that two days after her son passed, the same family friend came over and was just talking to her about random things. And one of the topics of conversation that came up was if she knew of this one specific TikToker. And that is when she revealed some tea. And it's very frustrating because it's about another person on this app. And I even messaged her about it. She left me on scene. But anyway, I found out something about somebody online and I found it totally by happenstance. People, she's like, oh, do you know so-and-so from the internet? And I'm like, yeah, I do. I don't live under a rock. Of course I don't know who that is. She tells me that she's going on a date with her dad, like, and she has been low-key kind of dating him on and off, like, you know, they eat lunch together or whatever. This woman is literally just a sweet little old lady, okay? So she's not making up. And then later on, I went on my own little investigation and it is true. Anyway, she's telling me that, like, he smells bad and he lives in his van and he can't really shower. He doesn't have money for food. And I'm like, what are you talking about? That man's daughter is so wealthy. What do you mean he doesn't have money for food? At first I didn't believe it. I went, no, I'm pretty sure he lives in the house. I've seen them post videos saying that he lives in the house. That is actually not true. And we'll go back to that in a second. So now I'm like side-eyeing everything from this moment. I'm like, what the f 
this is really weird. The day of my son's funeral rolls around, maybe two weeks later, obviously my son's babysitter is there and a couple of my friends are there also. So we start talking about this. One of my friends go, no, it is true. And I'll tell you why. Try to keep up, okay? One of my friends used to be friends with a former associate of the influencer in question. <laughs> Does that make sense? So she tells me a story of when her, my friend and former associate of this influencer went to go get some food and they saw this person's dad in the parking lot. So my friend's like, what is this guy doing in the parking lot? And what is he doing picking up somebody else's food doing DoorDash? So former associate who's with my friend says, yeah, no, he's literally homeless. Like the way that his children treat him is disgusting. She goes on to explain why the dad was no longer living in the house and just went in on this creator for making videos about being this nice girl who is such a giver. The whole reason the dad doesn't live in the house is because the mom cheated on him. The mom's really weird and would say stuff like, are you gonna buy me this or do you love Papa more than me? And then the children will say to the dad like, oh, if you wanted to live in the house, you should have bought Bitcoin when we were kids. I continue to see my son's babysitter on a weekly basis. We hang out, we get some food, whatever. Everyone around where we go to get food also knows about this situation with this person's dad. Like he can't really afford to eat. My son's babysitter is like giving him some of her pizza when he's there. He recently only got a bottle of water and ran out on the bill of a bottle of water because he literally cannot afford it. And what eats me alive is the fact that this girl sits on the internet and says, I'm a gift giver, I love giving back, I love my family. When in reality, she's texting her dad, hey, I need you to come over to be in a video. And her dad is apparently such a sweetheart and such a nice man that he will never ever say anything publicly about it or even to his children about it. He'll just go along with this because he would rather still get to see his children just to be in a video for public appearances because he's just hoping one day that his children will wake up and not be a fucking anymore <laughs> like like he's this man is doing doordash so that he can afford a gym membership so he can afford to shower or he showers at the showers at the beach and his daughter is so rich and the worst part is that she sits on the internet and pretends to be so caring when this man is basically starving and filthy because she refuses to do anything about it. So as you can see, that accusations are a lot. And I'm not sure why this girl feels the need to speak so openly about this. What she was kind of describing was just somebody living van life and somebody that is working to create their own income. And if you have a rich child, so what? So what? Like, some people would like to continue to work, but anyways. It ended up getting out that she was talking about Anna Paul. Maruka later posted the DM that she sent to Anna that she left on scene. And since she included this screenshot, you can see that she did send this message to Anna Paul. And it says, hey girl, I'm not gonna lie, something has been bothering me, and I think it's best for me to talk to you first. You have always been nice to me, and I think I owe you the courtesy to speak to you about it. I found out, not through the influencer vine, I found out by happenstance that your dad is borderline homeless and is living in his van doing DoorDash for some money and he's showering at the beach slash gym I heard that you apparently text him just to be in videos with you it hurts me as a former homeless person and also a parent I couldn't deal with the pain if I was him if this is true it also shatters the version of yourself you've shown to me and your audience to be honest I know that this lifestyle for him is true but I was wondering if you have a side or something about it she literally talks about this man as if he's like homeless and disgusting but she also says that she's previously homeless and that she would be in so much pain, yet describes this man as being employed. And someone had also come out later to show what looked to be a screenshot of Anna's dad as a Postmates driver. So literally doing DoorDash, like what is wrong with that? He's employed, he is a productive member of society. There are thousands of people that do DoorDash and and meal delivery like internationally that's a respectful job i don't and she describes him as being like dirty and gross essentially when she literally just also said that he is showering and has a gym membership that's how pretty much every van lifer does it there's literally communities with millions of people here on youtube that do van life well people with millions of followers i'm sure there's not millions of people doing van life and there's people that are like millionaires doing van life people with millions of followers that still go to the gym and shower that's where i shower i pay for a gym membership like i don't understand what this girl's point is this is the response from the whole situation 
So people were like, okay, there's receipts coming out to this story. She's not totally lying. And as a result, people went straight to Anna's page and started hating on her because they felt like she should not let her father be in this kind of position and started going through her content and finding videos that she had posted with her dad. So today we went out and we bought my papa a whole new wardrobe because listen, it just wasn't working. It just wasn't. And I also bought myself a dress real quick because I'm a shopaholic. I can't stop buying. Anyways, we had some juice. We had some pomegranate seeds and Michaela bought me a hair mask too, which was so sweet. But yeah, we also bought him a sneaky hair dye and a cologne as well, you know, final touches, a whole new makeover. And we also went to had some Korean fried chicken that Atis and Michaela are obsessed with, even though they're vegan now. And Atis, oh my gosh, when Atis wears his hat like this, I can't, it's so ugly, fuck. We gave my papa a haul of all the stuff we bought him and he was so grateful. If you don't know, my papa has been in Germany for the past three years and he couldn't come home because of COVID, but now he's finally home. Oh, and I've been eating these Betty's burgers every single day and then I was still hungry at like midnight so i made a whole fucking pasta because i'm a chef and it was delicious and i had quakesy with me as well he loved it too my dad hasn't had a haircut since before covid started and i think he's a hoarder because he can't he doesn't want to cut it because he's proud of it right and he's proud of his phone case too holy is broken so i finally bought him a new one okay i think he struggles to throw away old things so now he has a fresh phone case okay also do you guys remember tamagotchis you have them on your keychain and you feed them and oh i also bought myself this shirt because it says sporty and rich on it and eat more veggies i thought it was cute but okay we finally dropped my dad off to get a haircut finally and he looks so fresh he loves it by the way i don't know why he didn't do it sooner and don't hate on me okay for trying to change my dad i actually think he has a hoarding problem look he collects the apple seeds and stems from the apples he's been eating and and that's what he was doing with his hair. He was like collecting it. There were videos of her buying him clothes and getting him a haircut, which people were now commenting on and saying that they were viewing everything in a much different light. If I were this Anna girl, I would not have taken too kindly to this. I feel like this blush has too much payoff. Everybody else loves a really, really strong blush lately, but I don't have a lot of facial volume, so it just starts to look really muddy and gross and a lot of color really, really fast. All of this was going down and being said, but then people did some investigating and found her dad's Instagram page, which seemed to reveal more to a lot of people and cleared Anna's name a bit from people believing that she was just letting her father be homeless because it was revealed that he seems to be a van life guy, someone who is willingly living in his van to travel around the world to all these different places, posting about the sights and experiences that he has been having. But what would you guys think if you were living van life and some Somebody was literally talking about you on the internet as if you're an abused, woeful, homeless, destitute member of society that should be spoiled and pampered and taken care of by your influencer daughter because she works hard for her money. So she should be taking care of you as a grown man. What? And as everybody else on the victim internet narrative, and honestly, this and girl sounds like she has been through a lot. Like, I am to not double saying anything down. about that, but this is what she said. Before I even said anything, I made a video saying I was scared to say anything because it's very shoot the messenger. Then why did you say anything? I know how the internet is and you all told me to tell you. Told me you would support me if I told you. Okay, you can't blame the internet for your choices. I know what I said to be true. They know it to be true. Who? Apparent, like most of the internet didn't believe this to be true. That's why you're getting all the backlash. And they will let their fans say nasty things about my dead baby to get away with it. Okay. This is very victim -y. Like, what does this have to do with your dead baby? I'm very sorry that you lost your baby, but why are you bringing that into this? It's not me beefing them. I just felt like I had to tell you guys because it's so disgusting. I turn into the villain because I don't want to keep secrets of liars and manipulators. And I don't want to exist online when people are secretly vile and pretend not to be. See, I don't understand why she's like pretending like she's just assuming that this Anna TikToker is completely vile because she allows her dad to have his own freedom of will and to do what he wants like when did her dad say that he wants to be living with her and like mooching off of his daughter i didn't hear that ever anyways so she says and you get to say horrible things about my son and have zero repercussions because you're not famous and you can't cancel someone that no one knows the internet is not a fair place that's something we can agree with there's different rules for different people also agree and there's different rules for people who just watch and comment of course their dad is going to go along with it just like i said in my original video he wants to be with his children he also has his own social media and is living van life like 
give this man some credit that he's just living his own life. He would rather see his children than go against them for his own good. Apparently, Anna is going to treat her dad better now, but who knows? Maybe when they get back from that publicity vacation, he'll be back doing DoorDash. And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't know what point she's trying to make. Anna saw the video within an hour of it being posted and has said nothing. She surely sees what people are saying about my innocent and dead baby. If she cared so much, she would have replied to me when I asked her about it. If she's as positive as she pretends to be, she would be telling you not to bring up my baby. Okay, this literally, like, this Anna TikToker owes you nothing. You literally just instigated drama. You created this entire situation, fabricated this entire situation. She doesn't even owe it to you to respond. Anyways, and now it's another Veruca Salt scandal. Yes, this is the thing with dramatic people, is they never realize that they are the problem and never take accountability for their own actions. When reality is, it kept me up at night knowing this, and I couldn't hold it on anymore. I'm sure you couldn't. Anyways, let me know what you guys thought of that whole situation down in the comments below. What do you guys think about that? I like to use this little shiny one as like a bronzer slash highlight in one. All right, you guys. Well, I think that I'm going to call that the finished look. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know your guys' opinions on the whole JoJo Siwa music and the fact that she had like 70 people together working on this song for her. Do you think that she's in her Miley Cyrus Can't Be Tamed era? Let me know down in the comments below as well. What did you think of this whole van life situation? Do you think that this man should be pampered living in his ivory tower? Let me know down in the comments below. Also, there's been a lot of buzz about James Charles and Olivia Rodrigo. So let me know if you guys want me to cover a second video about that as well. But as always, you can check out my last video over here if you missed it. And be weird, be wild, and stay sparkly, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.